Phil here from Wings of Pegasus and welcome to another analysis video. On the agenda tonight we have Frank Zappa and this is going to be coming from 1978 and it's from the Mike Douglas show and I've kept in the beginning of the video here because he's just left the couch from being interviewed and he's just setting up but I just want you guys to see how he starts this performance so let's get him up on screen and see how he gets on. It's going to take a moment folks, i got to plug it in here. Turn on the giant amplifier. Let's see. Nice one, huh? Okay. One, two, three, one. going to jump in here because the great thing about Frank Zappa, the way that he used to play was so subtle in terms of the techniques that he's throwing in there. Like in the intro, if I mean, it's great just the way that the whole thing started because how many people do you see now who just plug in and are turning up their guitar and just getting everything sorted and just basically saying to the crowd, just amuse yourselves, I've just got to get everything set up. But then when you actually hear the tone that he's going through is pretty much, I mean, I know it's got overdrive, a little bit of distortion on there, but in terms of reverb or delay, there's nothing on this sound. It's just a really clean, biting sound that he's got here. And when I talk about subtlety, just those first harmonics that he hits, they're just ever so quiet quietly there, just really sitting in nicely in the mix. And when he just counts in the band to begin with, you can hear straight away that this band means serious business. They're all absolutely on it with that count in. But going back to Frank's playing in that intro, the fact that he's got that volume up at, well, four or five, he's taken about five off the volume here to take that edge off the tone in order to get a slightly different sound in that intro. And I've done one other Frank Zappa video. And in that video, I mentioned Frank's vibrato and his lack of vibrato as well. He makes an artistic choice sometimes to let the notes hang, especially with the melodic content in this piece. We've got a familiar riff, like I mentioned, in lots of compositions that are just instrumentals. There'll always be a familiar riff or line or hook that's in there that almost acts like a chorus would when you've got a singer. So we've got this, what I'm calling a chorus line, but he's intentionally letting the note hang rather than vibrato, and then he sprinkles in the vibrato for artistic effect when he wants it. 
Another thing to mention is just the technicality of his playing here because in this main melodic content we've got here, I'm calling it the chorus hook, that little mini sweep that we've got coming across those strings to nail that every time takes a lot of work, especially when you've got this tone that absolutely takes no prisoners. And this kind of thing, because it comes and goes within about a second, it's one of those subtle technique things that you might not appreciate when you're listening to it because it comes and goes so fast. The other great thing about Frank's playing is that you can tell it's all absolutely conscious, absolutely planned, and any parts that are slightly faster and lean towards subconscious playing are all composed beforehand. All of those notes are absolutely put in there for a reason. Even sometimes when you think that maybe it's a little bit pushing the boundaries musically in terms of staying within key and staying within scales, you know that Frank has done that absolutely on purpose. Let's get into a little bit more. <laughs> And that ending was just classic. What I was talking about, classic Frank there, just absolutely going off at a tangent and really pushing the boundaries of that playing and that musicality, but it's all intentional. There's a point to it. That's one of the things that Frank Zappa always did was make a point when he's playing, whatever he's composing, he's putting the music out there to push the boundaries and make people ask questions about the playing and about the different journeys that you go on within a piece and just the choice of notes and the way that he plays. So he's very much one of those players that is not gonna fade into the background, but he actually asks you questions whilst you're listening to him play. And just pointing out the subtle technique in there, you would have noticed Frank tapping with the side of the pick. That's something that you used to then get later in the 80s. Um, they had lots of reverb and delay in the 80s, of course, so you got a few more repeats of the tapped notes. But this is something that you can try at home. And the mistake that people often make when they're tapping either with the finger or with the side of the pick is that in order to get the same sound that Frank's getting here, he's tapping once on the string, um, pulling off with little finger to first finger, but then he's tapping twice with the side of that pick and sometimes three times sometimes four times and sometimes even five times so he's getting a lot of repeats with that pick actually hammering on effectively with the side of the pick so it means that because you can do that so quickly you can get the first note the second note and then you can get two or three hammer-ons with the side of that pick and then you can go back to the pull-off back to the first note so you can get some really cool effects with that and some people get stuck into the rut of just tapping notes once whereas if you tap it twice it'll give you a totally different sound exactly the same for if you tap in that note three times and then you can alternate between first finger and little finger or first finger little finger and third finger or second finger depending on the scale that you're playing it's always going to give you a different sound if you tap it in a couple of times or a few times but it's great it's something that you can experiment with your own playing. 
Another little technique thing is that right hand. We've got a good close up there and you can see that Frank actually puts in quite a lot of upstrokes here, but also a lot of alternate picking. He's got a really organized right hand, which of course you need to once you start throwing together notes that are gonna follow each other quite quickly. That pick's always gonna be going in the right direction. But great alternate picking there, but also those pre-bends as well that he throws in there. It just gives it that bluesy sound when you want it. And Frank's an absolute master of doing that. Just if you don't know what a pre-bend is, it's exactly what it sounds like. You bend the string first before picking it, and then you pick the string and then let it come down. And then you get that pre-bend sound. It's very bluesy sounding, but Frank throws it in there really subtly. But again, one of those techniques that will fly under the radar because it just comes and goes, as I said, so quickly, you might not notice it, but it absolutely is essential for the whole feel and the groove of the track. Just a quick word on the tapping with the side of the pick, because I've seen a lot of people saying that Frank Zappa was doing tapping in 1976, and this was before Van Halen's first album, and Van Halen actually formed technically in 1972, and then David Lee Roth joined them in 1974, and then they continued on from there. This was 1976, so I'm pretty sure that Van Halen had his tapping technique down for quite a few years when this came out, because it wasn't as if Van Halen and were playing totally different music before Frank Zappa and then after Frank Zappa. So just one of those things that Van Halen was definitely well into his tapping after this performance and when Frank was doing it. It might have even been the case that Frank heard some of this tapping or maybe saw Van Halen doing it and experimented with it himself. Because it's so similar in terms of the times that these guys are playing, you never really know how it works. But certainly I'd say that Frank here is very much throwing this in, this tapping, as an experimental thing. He does spend quite a lot of time on it. So it might have just been from that another influence that came into his playing that he decided to add into this particular piece. So another classic Frank Zappa performance here. And with Frank, melody was always king. He'd always have a particular line, chorus line, a hook that he would replay in order to get that arrangement, that composition a little bit easier to listen to. But then, like I mentioned, he'd always ask you questions throughout these performances. And the amount of subtle technique that he throws in there, like I mentioned, those subtle harmonics at the beginning, have a little rewind, have a look at that. Also how he's changed his tone in order to make it a little bit cleaner in those early stages, then goes fully open with that tone and then gets into that chorus line, that main hook that he plays throughout the piece. But thank you so much for suggesting this video for me to take a look at and keep those suggestions coming in the comments below. Let me know what you guys think. And if you like this video, please give it a thumbs up and subscribe and I'll see you guys at the next one. Rock.